Hello everyone, and welcome. I'm Wisp, the creator of the Universes plugin, and I'm here, finally, with the Universes 5.0 update. It's been in development for almost two years, and I'm so glad that it's finally ready for release. So, this whole project started as just a sort of hobby endeavor of mine, as I was trying to learn how to code in Java, along with a couple other small plugins, and this update really marks the beginning of its transition from a hobby project with messy code that's not super stable to something that's a little bit more prim and proper and professional. Um, so I'm going to go over just the main, the bigger things in this video to keep it, try to keep it brief, um, and then. The whole change log will be posted in the update section, and there will be updates to the overview page as well. Um, so, let's dig into it. Okay, so I'm here on my desktop, and I've got the Universe's 5.0 zip here. So when you open this for the first time, you're going to see the usual four the universes plugin and the three extensions but then you're also going to see this universes placeholders um, drive file. This is not a plugin file. This is for the placeholder API implementation which I will talk about uh, in a little bit. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract this to this folder here. So this folder had a copy of universes 4.2.2 installed. Um, I deleted it a moment ago. So I'm gonna just oops, I'm gonna take the first four items and drop them into here, and then I'm gonna go back over here and restart my server. So this is gonna be done the normal way you would install plugins onto your server, um, whether that's through an FTP protocol, through a web interface, through their your host's plugin lists. Um, <coughs> so. Now we've loaded up, uh, if we go uh, back into the game and type in universal list command, you'll see that we only have the first three worlds, um, and in my folder here, I have these other worlds here that should, that should um, exist. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in slash you code. Now you want to do this when there's no other people online. Um, because you don't want things to get messed up while this is running, and also worlds are not going to be loaded. Um, <coughs> so... Oops! Uh, looks like I left a couple of debug messages in one of the conversion steps, so we'll ignore that. Um, so what you'll see is... It's all going through the converting steps, so it's converting the world settings. Then you'll see converting player inventories. Then it'll show a list of all the players that exist within that server. And then it'll show converting player stats, player settings files, and then list the players from all that too. Um, and then the groups.yml. And then if something goes wrong with the conversion of the groups.yml, it's going to abort the entire conversion process and um, revert back to using the old stuff. Um, <clears throat> well, I guess it's not going to do that, but it's going to abort the conversion process because something got wonky with the groups.yml. And I know for a lot of people, um, the location of player inventories is a critical thing for those that use that system. And so if the groups.yml is broken for any reason, that could disrupt things and players could lose inventories. So if, you, if it tells you that something went wrong and it aborts the conversion, reach out to me for help, join my Discord, and I will help you as soon as I can. Um, so, once that's completed, if we type in UL again, we'll notice that we have the other uh, worlds listed here. So, now, if we go back into the plugin folder, and we go into Universes, you'll notice a few things are different. So, in the Player Data folder, there are a couple of different subfolders. And each one of these subfolders has a player's UID, and inside of that is a folder for things. So there's a data section, 
um, inventories, which holds player inventories. So like I've got an inventory saved for cool stuff. Um, and settings. So this will be like the overrides, for example. So I've got game mode override true and everything else is false. Data uh, is things like previous locations and stuff like that. So I've moved all of the universe's data out of the database and back into files, um, but I've organized them much more. So um, when universes started, everything was done through files. I think it was that way up until universes 3.0. The files were disorganized and a mess, and I decided to switch to databases because I had learned how to use databases, and I thought it could be much more organized. But um, what I found after having universes on databases for a while was that database communications are not always super fast, depending on you know the database host could be could go down, there could just be latency between the database and the server and there were a lot of people who were encountering timing errors surrounding interactions with the database because it was just really slow much slower than going to a file directly so I moved us back to this and I spent a while trying to come up with a more organized system and sort of organize things better for both for use in the pl in the code and for people who are using the plugin so when I have it split like this it's much easier for me to figure out where something is referencing in my code because I have like a specific folder that it's going to point to as opposed to just one file that has everything. Um, and if you go into the worlds folder, you'll notice that I've done the same thing. So we've got a folder for each world, and if we go into them, there's a settings.yml which holds all of the settings, including this new setting option called player limit enabled, which is set to false which is related to the fix for the full, full world bug. Um, so, um, another thing you'll notice if you open the config file is it looks, there's it's much, much more organized. There are comments, it's sectioned off in a much better way. It looks much more professional. I spent a good 15 hours probably working on this coming up with the comments and all the sections and creating these headers <laughs> this was a challenge um, so if we go through this um, one thing I'll notice is this version string so this should not be touched by anybody at all. This is more for the plugin. So when the plugin updates, when a new update is released, it's going to check the version of the new plugin to this version listed here. And if it's different, it's going to rewrite the comments in case there were updates or new things added to the comments, which is why that's there. So if you change that, it's not going to do anything, but it's on pointless um, <clears throat> so there are a few more options that you'll probably notice scrolling through that I'm not gonna go over because I don't want to take too much time doing this um, we'll get we'll dig more into this in a moment um, but I also wanted to show the groups.yml files so this is new um, this is this did not organize it the way that I expected. Uh, I think the groups YML that I had set up was not very great, but it's basically going to take your groups and it's going to restructure them. So I wanted to have just two groups. Um, so I'm going to do, I'll just call it cool, and then this one I will just call default. Or no, I'll, I'll call it. Uh, I'll just I'll just leave these. So groups now look like this. So before you had to have like 
the world, then the colon, then you go to the next line, and you'd space it in two, then you'd say the group, and then a colon, then a space, and the group name. Instead, it's the group name colon, and then just a hyphenated list of all the worlds. So if you wanted to add a new world to this, let's say I wanted to actually add cool stuff to this, I could just do dash, cool stuff, done. I've added this world to the group. And, um, coinciding with this is some big fixes to the reload command. So, I'm actually going to go into my config.yml first to change a few things here. So, I'm going to turn on per world inventories, per world inventory grouping. Um, I'll leave that off. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave. I'll do that. Okay. Now, if I come in here and do type in that, it reloads the config. So the reload command now reloads everything. It reloads all of the groups. It reloads player settings files. It reloads world settings files and it reloads components for the extensions extension plugins too so if you update anything in the universe's configuration files anywhere in any of the configuration files everything will update with just that command you don't need to do a server reload you don't need to do a server restart and as you saw it reloads super duper quick so if you make a change anywhere in universes now updates are instantaneous um, I would recommend being careful if you're transitioning between having per world inventories on and off and turning on and off grouping because that's gonna change how everything is organized so if I go to this cool stuff world now I had items in my inventory I had I had an item in my inventory do this um, and as you can see it was placed there because the conversion was successful and if I go say little stuff another so this is after fixing the another world there are the groups that remains in my inventory so the groups successfully updated without having to reload the server or anything so I'm gonna go back to just the default world my inventory will save and switch just as it should <clears throat> so now let's say I want to create some new worlds I want to create a new nether and a new end or whatever and a new overworld so I start this it starts off like it was before so let's just call this new world I'm going to make this a normal world. Normal. Let's say easy. And now we see that there's this new section here. So there's generator, group, and seed. So it's got three listed here because you can put these in any order. There's a lot of work actually getting this to work. But I wanted to do this because when you create a world, you might not necessarily use all these. Since if I have a specific set order, you know. Let's say you wanted to use a generator, but you didn't want to use a seed and you didn't want to use a group. But if I have a group generator seed to make it alphabetical, then you're going to have to put in random things there to fill that space. So instead, I've designed this so you could put in a generator, a group, or a seed in any of these spots. So I could say, put in, that is my seed. And I want to put this in its own group called new and I don't have a generator so I'm not gonna put one in and I'm just gonna create new and so it's gonna start creating the world and it's uh ooh <laughs> that hmm <sighs> okay so that was weird. Um, server free that a little bit. So uh, I go to new world. 
here we are in the new world. Uh, I think that error was just because this server was on 1.16 before I updated everything. I regenerated the worlds, but there's probably still some things in there that are off. So, as you saw, I gave um, a group. So if I go ahead and open up the groups.yml, all those worlds are in their own new group. Um, and now I believe if I go into the world settings, the seed is saved now. Generator is still empty because there is no generator. Um, when those are saved and any important data is reapplied when the world is, or when the server is reloaded. Um, and now of course if I go back to the player data and I go to the inventories, I've got inventories for new new categories. So there's an inventory sets for for world and for the group new. So any inventory stored in a world or a group will be located here. So um, if I were to change this, t if I were to turn off uh, per world inventory grouping, or just a group by worlds, then I would still see new in this folder, and it would just be unused. And I would probably get stuff inventory for world and cool stuff, and then I'd have folders generating for the other worlds. So if you had, um, if you were transitioning to that, for example, you could copy. I could copy the inventories out of this folder into a new folder, or just rename this or something, and I'd have all those inventories move to a different world set. Not that you would do that, but both worlds and worlds and groups will be stored here so yeah um let's see what what else do we have to go over right so there was that new system and so universe's import is exactly the same with the new section um and I actually do want to get in a generator here um, for something. So I had on my desktop um, this void gen plugin. So I'm going to drop this in. And I'm going to reload the server. Right? So. I'm going to create some more new worlds. So you see, I'm going to do, I'm going to call this empty. And it's going to be normal world. Normal generation. It's going to be this generated, say, easy. And I'm going to, so the generator is called void gen. So it's the name of the plugin would be the name of this. So let me just copy this real quick. So if I go into the plugins, we see, void gen so I will put in that name for the generator so void gen let's say I want it to be in this one group called empty so I go ahead and do that so if I plus undo this go to US that's so I'm gonna go to empty and as you can see we've created this world with that generator, so it's empty, and the nether and the end world actually generate exactly the same. So you guys, the nether. So if you wanted a specific, a different generator for another end, the end, um, you might want you might turn off uh, end for overworld while you're generating the other the new worlds or just delete the worlds that it generates and recreate them and you can assign their group in a different generator um, and then as I had uh, demonstrated before if we go back into the universes form we go to the worlds let's look at empty Uh, the generator is listed as void gen, and so that'll be applied whenever this world loads. So if the void gen plugin is removed, this is going to stop having its effect. And um, 
it has a seed. Um, I guess, do, do they all have a seed listed? No, they don't. So I'm not sure where that seed came from, but it might have been from the uh, void gen, actually, could have applied a seed. Um, I don't think this one does either. Well, this one has a seed because I gave it a seed. Um, and of course, if I go into the groups.yml again, this one's got its own group. So the next new feature uh, that I want to talk about is the new economy system. So this is a pretty major thing that I wanted to add because there weren't a whole lot of things that really had a per world economy integrated into it. Now, there are some plugins that I have found that don't work with this correctly. Uh, Chess Shop does. So it's a Vault plugin. And I, I don't know if it's just the... It's, it might be the way that I integrated um, the Vault API. I might not have done it correctly. Um, but anyway, uh, so there's this new folder. There's this new file here um, called the Economy Config. Since this is where the economy stuff is held, I put it here in a separate place um, just because it was easier for organization. So it says it contains all the configuration options for the new economy system. So. Whether or not we're using it, the symbol you want to use for the money, and then the name of the currency, both singular and plural. Um, so you can, if you were, say, I would set as dollars because um, I'm in the, U the U.S. and that's our currency. It would, if you were, say, in, in Europe and you wanted to use the euro, you can just change those here so it's totally universal currency. Uh, so let's go ahead and enable this. Go back into the game and reload. So now if I type in bow, sorry, u bow, does that have a balance of zero? So the reason why all of the universe economy can commands have the u in front of them is because I didn't want them to, like, if you were, had, say, Essentials installed or something, or another plugin that also worked with the economy, and that had a bow plugin and an eco command like, to manage economy stuff, I didn't want my plugins and stuff to interfere with that. So you could have both and manage it with either. Uh, so I've got zero dollars here. So let's say I go eco, or u eco set, say pretty two. It's gonna be a hundred bucks. Um, so it took zero money from me and sent me to this amount. So you can, the reason why I set that up just so that you were saying the music account, you can see how much money they had before in case you want to set it, switch it back. But now I have a hundred bucks. Um, if I type in Uval. I have $100. Now if I go US, let's say I go to cool stuff, and I type in my balance here, I've got $0 in this world. Um, so US, I think I was in world. Yeah. And if I go, oops, let's do this one, oops, nope, uh, <laughs> this one. There we go. I need to balance here. I've got $100 in this world too. So uh, the economy grouping goes by the inventory grouping because I sort of made the assumption that if you were using per world economies, you had per world grouping and per world inventories enabled as well. Um, because, it, I mean, if you didn't weren't using per world inventories, why would you want to separate economies? Um, so if you've got per world inventories enabled, but not per world inventory grouping, then each world is going to have its own balance. If you've got per world inventories enabled and per world inventory grouping enabled, then each group will have its own balance. Um, I 
I guess the other key feature to mention before I get into placeholder API would be the updates to the full world system. So this was what I came up with um, to sort of fix this issue. So I'm going to go back to just the default world. So what I had discovered sort of was happening was for whatever reason uh, sometimes when a player when players changed worlds it was not incrementing or decrementing the player count correctly so if a world so the disabled state for player inventory or player uh, player limits for a world or a group was um, negative one so that negative one it was disabled and so the check was sort of ignored anything beyond that and there was a check so if you wanted no players to be able to go into a world you would set that value to zero and then if a player tried to go into that world it would um, would block them so the issue was somebody would enter the world and it would increment twice so then when they left the world or it was just the way I had the check set up I guess um yeah i'm sorry i'm mixing this up a little bit so it was the way i the way the way it happened was it would check i think first to see if player counts were equal i don't remember exactly what i had it set to because i had it changed but uh what was happening was it would decrement the player count twice when a player left the world so instead of the player count being zero and the limit being negative one it would be player count was negative one and the limit was negative one so it would say oh the player count is equal to the limit so the world is full so what I've done now is I've changed the system so um, I open up the world edit menu there's this new option here that says enable player limit and so the player limit um, I, sh I should probably uh, change that um, in the code so it should be defaulting to zero now instead of negative one then you've got this to enable or disable the player limit um, so what this means is that if you don't want to use player limit that full world bug will never happen and what this also means is that this is never going to be a low number like this will only be set to whatever the limit you want to be is and it's I have um, a bit of code set up so that if it is somehow decremented twice and goes below zero, it's just reset to zero. The player count is reset to zero. So, like the way this would work, this this should this should be zero. Yeah. Uh, so, if I wanted to use that, I can turn this on. Um, just make sure I have, yep, so I go US, so I go to cool stuff, and if I try to go back to world, it tells me that it's full. Alright, so US, world, and now I go back and edit this, turn this back off, without changing the player count, and I teleport to cool stuff, and then I teleport back to world still lets me teleport because the full world check has been totally disabled so this should hopefully circumvent that entire issue and for the most part completely eliminate it while um the limit is enabled i so the default needs to be updated fixed to zero um which is what i'm going to do right after i finish recording this video um but um I think this issue should be completely eliminated. I am not 100% certain because I, I've done as much testing as I could, but I've had trouble reproducing this bug. Like, it just seems to be a totally random occurrence when it happens. So, I don't know for certain that this has been resolved, but I think it very likely has. Um, and so, I'm, I'm not expecting... I'm, I'm hoping... <laughs> that doesn't pop up anymore um, the command to 
uh, reset the player count is uh, still exists in the event that something happens, but um, it should be totally fixed at this point. Um, yeah. So the last thing I want to talk about is the uh, placeholder API implementation. So placeholder API is a tool you can use to sort of change messages and strings that are presented to the server. So it allows for more complex usage of strings. And the reason why I went with, I implemented this placeholder API system was because um, I had a few people asking me about making the prefixes work across servers in a bungee cord network. And that sounded like a cool idea, but there was no way to get that to get the the prefixes to transfer in cross server chat plugins that existed. Um, just the way I had it implemented. But um where I was working with um one person who has helped me a lot with testing things. Um and we realized that with placeholder API, modifications to strings and messages could be made to work across servers in a bungee cord network. So by using placeholder API with universes world prefixes, um, that could be done. So if I go into the config, um, just as it is right now, whoops, that's the wrong thing. Um, And go to the bottom here, um, where we got prefix chat, and I make this true and reload. And if I say hi, you know it says this message has been modified by the server. Huh? That's new. Um, as you can see, it shows um, the prefix, shows the world there, um, as it normally would. Um, so if you wanted to use placeholder API, you have to, uh, for one thing, put in the plugin. So I'm going to do that really quick because I don't think I have it here. Yeah. Um, I think it's in here. Yes, here we are. So I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this in. And then I do need to reload the server. So, uh, Placeholder API has their network. So you can just go to their network and get extensions from there. Um, but at the time that I finish up my plugin, the ability to create accounts with their network is currently unavailable. Uh, so I have not been able to create an account to actually upload the extension. So for now, it's just part of the zip. Um, so then once we've loaded Placeholder API, we go in here, we go to this expansions, and um, all you have to do is drag and drop this into here, and then I think we just need to reload again. Um, just double check that there isn't any configuration work I have to do. All right. So, now if I say hello again, there's just the world prefix there just like it was before, but now it's using the placeholder API system. So, any other formatting done with placeholder API will um, have its effect. Um, this can be working, it worked in with that, so you can make modifications through placeholder API. It can be used to send prefixes across servers in a bungee cord network, as I mentioned, which was the main reason for this. So it doesn't look any different, but what's happening behind the scenes is. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see. I think that just about uh, covers all of the main stuff that I wanted to talk about for this update. Um, you'll see that the change log, the change log is pretty long because there were a lot of things that were changed. So, I hope you all enjoy the new update, <laughs> and I hope you are as excited as I am for all of these changes that should hopefully make this plugin just a lot better and a lot easier to use for everyone. And um, 
As always, if you have any questions or need help with anything, there's my Discord group in the overview section that you can join. Um, you can reach out to me on the Spigot forums. I check that pretty frequently. And um, I don't know if I still have my email listed. Um, I don't check that as much, but that's there, I think. Anyway, have fun with Universes 5.0.